Hello, I'm Dennis Seatsma, Dennis John Seatsma Productions, Homestead, Florida, USA. It's August 21st, 2024, it's a Wednesday. It's about 10.39 a.m. East Eastern Time. And this video segment is about my 1994 Astrovan improvement project. Uh, <clears throat> it's not going to be a full restoration. Um, I took the blue wire off and put on a purple wire so it matches the rest of the van color scheme. And <clears throat> next I'm going to install the starter onto the van. Last night I was pretty happy with the work I did uh, with the pan bolts. And I'll be posting some pictures on a slideshow or in the social media groups pretty soon to share my research. But what was in the service manual differed uh, from what I found in the vehicle uh, was best for the vehicle and I found the cause of the uh, droppings in the van it's uh, iguana likes it a lot the iguanas when they're little they're okay they're cute but they get big they get nasty and they start doing destructive things so uh, iguanas are not cool when they get big um, but when they're little they just run around anyway uh, I am gonna put some flex paste around the windshield because I have to stop the bleeding till I get around to doing the body work above the windshield and I mentioned that in my post to the Astro Van groups today I, I gave them an update in writing and an update in the video and thank you for the comments and tips and technical information from the people in the groups that are interested in following my project to install a remanufactured engine into my 1994 Astro van. So that's it for this segment. This is the introduction for today, August 21st. And this is not a how-to. This is a video diary. This is a documentary, not a how-to. And uh, how it comes out, I think, is I'm pretty confident it's going to be good. Uh, Powertrain Products has an excellent reputation. Uh, a lot of people say they bought their product and have been happy with it. And the only problems I've had so far are, are out of my own ignorance. Uh, you know, with the... Of course, I never swapped an en engine in an Astro Band before, so... Live and learn, as they say. And uh, I'm not sure if I have the harmonic balancer all the way in. I, I'm not sure what motor oil I want to put in it. I'll probably put in whatever it is recommended in the manual. And they say don't use synthetic for the first 500 miles, is what some of the people on the Astro Van group say. Say use conventional oil the first five, you know, so the ring seat and all that. And they said if it's roller cam, don't worry about breaking in the camshaft. Um, but I would, I am a little curious. So some people say the the modern oils don't have enough zinc in them for environmental concerns uh, you know they want to destroy engines anyway I guess uh, internal combustion engines are bad for the the world lives and dies by internal combustion I mean where were they concerned about pollution during World War II oh they were but they yeah okay where when all the oil fields were burning that uh, that politician over there uh, set them all on fire uh, you know oh no that couldn't be the cause of it <laughs> cause of what I don't know what we're talking about let me quit ranting and move on to installing this uh, starter so I get some work done before it starts raining again Audience, thank you for watching. Uh, do it yourself. Work can be dangerous. Do it at your own risk or don't do it. Hire a professional. My name is Dennis Seatsma. Dennis John Seatsma Productions, Homestead, Florida, USA. And I am a Astrovan enthusiast and aficionado. Uh, this project is a 1994 Chevy Astrovan that I've owned since it was new and I absolutely love the utility of this van 
it has some problems uh, so I put a remanufactured engine in it from powertrain products and I'm making good progress now now thank you new subscribers to my new YouTube ta thank you so much I picked up 118 subscribers in the last few weeks and before that I only had like 300 subscribers in seven years so apparently this video diary documentary about one van is uh, is popular so thank you new subscribers and thank you old subscribers for st sticking with me I know my content is always uh, not is sometimes crude but I'm doing the best I can to learn how to edit and produce my video productions from the video segments today's segment starts out at about 11 in the morning I've been working already but it's 11 in the morning on Eastern Time on the 22nd of August 2024 August 22nd 20 I always try to say the date because stuff is up on YouTube forever and people when they post comments they want to know if you're you're still active or not or if you've gone to be with God <laughs> anyway I've got my core almost ready for return but I'm not going to send it back until I get I'll let you look at that for a minute oh isn't it beautiful I hate to give up this engine I hate to send it back as a core because it is immaculate but I think what destroyed it was uh, I had a build up back here where the damage is this actually disintegrated. I had a buildup of oil that I, I did regular oil changes, but for some reason this was yucked up and it blocked the oil flow to number six, and that's where the bearing failed. So I finally think I figured out. I was putting the pistons back in it last night, and I re while I was looking at it, um, I realized that. Now the number here on this block is 10. Two two seven one nine five one zero two two seven one nine five. So whoever gets this engine, there you're getting a honey of a block because I the original crosshatch from the factory from 1994 was still all six cylinders. There was no ridge. You know, I did regular oil changes every three to five thousand miles usually around 3,500 3, the oil would turn colors on me a little bit and as many oil changes as, as I've done over the years you wouldn't believe the difference uh, how slick new oil is compared to oil that's been in the engine for a little while and you know these these coolant uh, fluids in a modern engine are very important they do wear out I mean your coolant deteriorates the oil deteriorates power steering fluid transmission if you do the regular service it's going to last a long time and uh, if you can't do the service yourself take it to a professional a lot of times I did I just didn't have time to mess with it but anyway this 102 I don't know I think it's 22 I got to clean that off before I send it back I'm, I'm really curious about the serial number but uh, Powertrain Products wanted the block put back together for some reason to give me core credit. Um, and this thing is beautiful. I, I, I really hate to give it up. And normally I would have had a lo local machine shop rebuild it for me, but I just don't have the time to mess with it. And I could rebuild it myself. Excuse me. It's a fairly simple engine uh, compared to modern engines that... Oh man, modern engines. I, I watch the guy on I Do Cars all the time. Hello, Eric. I love your, I love your stuff. Eric's cool, and I like his jokes too. <laughs> Keep it up, Eric. You're doing great. Also, uh, Vice Grip Garage. I like him, and I like, uh, uh, what is it, Eon out there in the desert. Uh, he does some great fabrications. I watch these car shows, and, uh, but uh, lost my train of thought again. Anyway, you've looked at the block long enough. Now look at the new remanufactured engine. Isn't that beautiful? Powertrain Products turns out such a beautiful thing when they send it to you. And of course I had to do the time and chain cover 
and the harmonic balancer I don't know if I've got that fully installed or not I'm waiting for the install tool to arrive and it's delayed for some reason I've got CPI central port injection it's a that system was used by GM on several vehicles and engines on this 4.3 liter from 1992 to 1995 after 95 they changed it to another spider it they still used uh, that kind of system but the spider they went to uh, was not shooting all six spy, uh, injectors at the same time about three times per RPM uh, they went later to a sequential where the computer said which cylinder to fire now some people said the sequential was better other people say this was better but um, there's better support for the sequential one the cores for the CPI are they're getting really hard to come by but if you want watch the rock auto website and don't worry if it's grayed out come back later and see when it is not grayed and uh, also Amazon if you got the part number and I I'm gonna give you the part number all all this stuff is it all my research will be in a slideshow as a separate video so that you when we are going through you can pause it and get the part numbers and I'm finding that pictures are better than any documents that I try to convert for some reason the documents don't convert well uh, when you put it into a video production so I'm trying to take photographs as much as I can but I now know from my past videos that I got the oil thing on the right place uh, got the valve covers and uh, I used a lot of new bolts uh, and uh, that's going to leave me some leftover bolts but I'm not happy with the number eight stud here on the upper plenum I, I, I'm going to go to GM and get the part number the Chevy dealers are real good about giving you part numbers but I like to go face to face and talk to talk to them so that they know uh, I'm real and that I'm serious and I'm taking time to go talk to them and I, I'm always polite because those people can help you give you part numbers and then I can find what I need usually or order it have it shipped but anyway I need the stud for number eight and number four I'm not happy with number four is too short and I'm trying to get it in the right thread because it's like an M6 but I don't know what else it's M6 and uh, two and a quarter is too short I want two and a half three inches too long that's for number four there but it's an M6 bolt and it's not an M6-1 which is the most common which is of course but uh, anyway uh, I ordered a die for the two other threaded threads so I'll, I'll check the threads against one of these bolts and you see that I got some studs po popped up here that pretty easy for me to get a bolt out and look at it but I want a two and a half inch bolt here I don't know why GM gate put a bolt in there it's too short and I got the distributor in just so I don't drop something down there by accident I had when I changed the distributor accidentally dropped one of the distributor cap screws down the hole and it ended up in the oil pan but I don't think it did any damage I think it was just the fact that number six was clogged up with oil caused that number six bearing to spin uh, and damage the crankshaft so this does have a damaged crankshaft but the remanufacturers and machine shops know how to how to repair crankshafts uh, something called spray welding or whatever I don't know how they do it but anyway tell post a comment if you know or give me a link to a video that shows me how they remanufacture or recondition damaged crankshafts they're too hard to make to throw them away so anyway I'm real happy with how this is going now today I had to get to the back so what I did is I put a 30 amp fuse because I don't know if I got something touching or shorted out or whatever I've done so much work I can't you know so I wanted to put a fuse connected to give the thing power to see if the fuse pops and it's okay but I needed to open the back hatch so I needed power to the vehicle and that I finally got it open back here and I have a leak 
here over the spot top light so I put some flex paste on it for now I took auto body repair at Robert Morgan Votech in Miami years ago so I know how to do the repair work uh, I just need the time and I've got a guy here in Homestead from a windshield company he gave me his card and I told him what I'm doing that I want to repair this myself because I tried using body shops and and you know it came out looking beautiful but I still had a leak and I still have a leak uh, since 2017 when I put it in the body shop in Homestead so I want to do get the glass guy take the glass out for me I'll cover it with tar tarps and plastic and I'll do the body work myself uh, to fix the leak to prepare it and then let somebody reinstall the windshield for me and uh, the old windshield needed replacement anyway it had delaminated over, over the course of 30 25 years I, I did it in 2017 but you see how I carefully marked everything as I took it apart and that makes it a lot easier to put it back together again when you do this even though it's time consuming and takes a lot of p-touch label after a while I got tired of doing p-touch so I went to a word processor because I could put more information on there and then just paste it on the on the poly bag so if you're still watching and I hope you are uh, I know my videos are not sophisticated they don't have the pop-up windows the clown balloons and the corrections to whatever I mu must say wrong and I do say things wrong like uh, I thought I had the pan bolts correct for the st and I hung the starter yesterday and did the clamps so but I'll talk about that later the lighting is not so good to crawl under the van right now and it's almost lunchtime so I'm gonna order lunch I got some stuff to pick up at Walmart over near Homestead Air Force Base uh, or Homestead Reserve Base which was formerly Homestead Air Force Base uh, so I gotta go over to Walmart and pick up a few things a few human required items and I'm waiting for the motor oil to come in uh, I ordered that online from Walmart and they're gonna deliver it uh, out here to the farm uh, the Redland Trop it's a boutique tropical fruit grove and I've got avocados right now hanging on the tree that needs to be picked but I'm too busy with this project to pick fruit right now so I'll just let it get a little bit bigger on the tree and then I'll pick as soon as I get this van running but as soon as the motor oil comes I'll dump I'll fill this full of they said use uh, people on the Astro van groups and thank you people for all the tips and support and thumbs up and what have you uh, they suggested using conventional oil initially for like the first 500 miles and uh, after that I can go to any motor oil that's recommended I asked powertrain products to give me some guidance on break-in but they haven't responded to me about that it may be that it's on their website and I just am ignorant uh, about that but I have new valve covers that I bought because um, the old valve cover was damaged it fell apart in my hand and I, I wondered why I had an oil leak um, but as soon as I get motor oil in there I'll put a spin on oil filter because that's how it came from the factory I'll, later I'll do the radiator and all that but I'll use the tool uh, I'll take the distributor out and I'll t use the tool here the OEM 2270-60 and this I think this was like ten dollars at AutoZone and I will prime the engine and check the oil pressure and make sure it's within limits within tolerances uh, because if it's not within tolerance uh, it'll go back to powertrain products under warranty I bought the five-year warranty on this because uh, at my age and uh, my health I expect to live at least five more years the seven year I considered but um, it was a lot more expensive for the seven year warranty uh, went up quite a bit so 
I hope you're enjoying this video diary. This is not a how-to. I make mistakes. If I make a mistake, I'll try to correct it later if I'm aware of it. And my audience sometimes points out to me very well what the mistakes are. So uh, thank you, audience. Thank you for posting comments and, and especially thumbs up. Uh, you can su subscribe if you like or unsubscribe and it won't cost you anything and I'm not making any money on these videos until I have 4,000 and I have 418 at the last count and I'm not doing this for money I'm doing this for the love of the sport and I'm meeting some interesting people online uh, exchanging ideas and uh, stories uh, it's good to swap stories especially old people old people have some great stories I could tell you some fishing stories and lobster uh, scuba diving from Miami to Key West and scuba diving around the world. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, we're talking about Astro Van enthusiasts, Astro Van fans. And some of the people watching my videos said, oh man, I didn't really think that much. But it's a very, such a practical vehicle. Uh, and I know, you know, the... The blue, Kelly Blue Book says it's worth a minus 500, but, you know, what would you have to spend to get something that can do this, that can tow 5,000 pounds and have all this cargo space and, and still carry people or put the back seat back in and carry even more people? And this was a kid hauler back in when it was new, uh, and I've had many happy family travels in this. And I had, had the seats redone in leather by... Uh, by uh, Homestead Upholstery, Obed over there, and I had a new radio put in by Noe Electronics. They're across from Cracker Barrel, both of them, uh, in Florida City, right off the Florida Turnpike. When the Florida, when it ends at exit zero on Palm Drive in Florida City, uh, you take a right and you go down the road uh, to the next light to Chrome Avenue, State Road 997, then go north about a block and you'll find Noe Electronics and they've helped me a lot. They put the Viper uh, alarm system on here for me and I've been doing improvements to the electrical system myself. I'm an out of work electrical engineer, electronics engineer, uh, working for FAA 42 years at Miami International Airport and working there as a home base and then they'd send me as a flying toolbox to wherever they wanted me. So, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Uh, now that I've got the physical part done, I got the engine in the bay and I got the engine mounts done. Now I can get into the technical of the sensors and the wiring. And I do have a spare computer, a spare PCM I got from a salvage yard. And I've swapped the firmware chip. I know it works. Uh, I probably should get another firmware chip so that they're hot swappable uh, you know without having to move the chip every time but uh, anyway it's coming along and I'm not worried about what it looks like too much because you know Jorge's body shop at Homestead did a marvelous job I think in 2017 and they gave me a, a, a what at the time seemed exorbitant or exorbitant but it was really a reasonable price and you know I'm happy with that except I need new moldings or I need to take them off that's one of the things I need is look at how deteriorated these moldings are and uh, this one is cracked I need to replace this ba uh, balance I need an upper shroud for the radiator I ordered a new radiator but it, the wrong one came in from Rock Auto I ordered it wrong and uh, I need the oil I need the radiator that has the oil cooler in it and you can tell because if it has the oil cooler it's here on the left bank on the left side the driver's side but I got the one without it by accident and I sent it back and I said store credit I, oh that was a mistake I should have left it on the return it back to credit card because right now I'm waiting for the store credit to come back because Rock Auto says, oh, we got to get it back, you know, in New York or wherever it came from and make sure it's okay before we give you the credit. Whereas if I'd said the credit card, they would have done that. Uh, I don't know when, but anyway, 
I should have done the credit card. Note to self. In the future, do it on the credit card. To back and forth. But I plan to order the correct one as soon as I get the store credit. And I want to, I've got new lines I ordered for the oil. Because I like having, if I'm towing, I like the idea of an oil cooler. And this is rated for 5,000 pounds. Now, there is a 4L60E transmission in it. And I have another group online on my YouTube, uh, Facebook called 4L60E. You can join. And uh, I'm going to ignore it. Uh, you can go to voicemail. I never answer unless I know who it is. I never answer, so if you call me, leave a message if you want to talk to me. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to hit delete as soon as it quits bothering me. Um, so, let's see, where was I? Uh, anyway, I'm having a lot of fun with this, and I know it's a little rough, but don't worry about it. Uh, I can do the auto body work myself, or I can take it to a shop when I get that far along. And the chickens are getting active behind me here uh, from the neighbor's chickens. He, they think, when they hear a human voice, they think it's time to get fed. Uh, they love humans, and they don't know why we're, why we keep chickens. Because, you know, what we do with chickens. Okay, so anyway, this is how I mark everything up, what I'm taking. I wish I had taken more pictures when I was taking it apart. That would have helped me put it back together the same way, easier. So, uh... Let's see, what else can I talk about? What am I going to do and what I have done? So, again, fans, thanks for watching, fellow Astro Van enthusiasts. If you find a project van somewhere, uh, document it, work on it, love it, and maybe one day it'll be back on the road and give you good service. Because <clears throat> if you had to buy something to do what these things do today, uh, from a certified used lot, you'd spend at least twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So, spending $10,000 to refurbish one, at least get it drivable, you know, may not be ten grand. It might be seven grand, five grand. But it's going to be, uh, you know, you got to have commitment to the project and good enough health. Uh, health is a big thing as you get older, because if you can't work, you can't get anything done. So these are my plans, and thanks for watching. We'll cover some more in the next segment. It's 11:42 now on August 22nd, 2024, and <clears throat> I have to back up every segment to my computer because I've had these chips fail and I've lost entire series. So, and it's going to start raining pretty soon, I think, for the afternoon thunderstorm in August, uh, as it happens in southeast Florida pretty often. So I'm getting staged, I'm getting organized. Um, I want to find my dipstick somewhere. Okay, I got the transmission lines and, uh, and I got to get organized on my materials. It looks like that may, no that's something else. Oh, it reminds me, I have to order this plastic thing. I don't know what it is, but it broke on me. I don't know what I don't know what that thing is. I don't know what it is. Anyway, it the plastic line broke and I think it's some kind of environmental thing. Emissions. So we'll mess with that. Astrovian research. This distributor cap. SAE pan bolts, compressor bolts and studs, okay, power steering, okay, that's an old valve cover gasket, I'll throw that away, engine mount bolts, driver side engine mount, okay, those are extras, you don't need those, okay, you got the engine mounts in, Compressor rods. Alright, well, uh, where is my oil dipstick pickup tube? I'm going to need that. I want to get, oh, there it is. Okay, I want to get that installed before I put motor oil in it. And 
I bent it up a little bit, so got to straighten it and get it to fit. And this is what I call getting staged, getting ready to work. But for right now, I'm going to put some, put the tarps back on it, and uh, run to run some errands. Thanks for watching. Hello, audience. I'm Dennis Seatsma. My name is Dennis Seatsma, Dennis John Seatsma Productions, Homestead, Florida. It's August 22nd, 2024. That's a Thursday. It's 8.03 p.m. Eastern Time. And in this video segment, where I'll talk a little more about my 1994 Chevy Astro Van project to um, replace the engine that failed at 208,000 miles. Uh, I believe it failed now that I've had a chance to forensically examine a little closer. I had a lack of oil going to the cylinder number six and caused the crank shaft rod, bear, uh, rod bearing, uh, connecting rod bearing for number six to be oil starved and eat up the bearing. Uh, what I could have done to prevent that, I'm not sure. I did regular oil changes. Uh, filter and oil all the time but the plan is um, tomorrow uh, this is probably the end segment for today for the Astro van um, tomorrow I plan to install the oil filter and uh, check out this tool that just arrived to see if it works if it's the right thread for putting on the harmonic balancer now I like tools like this because it's got a good bearing on it so that we're not putting so much stress on the threads instead we're moving the harmonic balancer to install it without da doing damage but of course the threads have to be right and those are supposed to be uh, oh seven sixteenths uh, national course and I'm going to take photographs of all my uh, bags and put those into a slideshow so this can help other enthusiasts in store restoring uh, the Astro vans in the future uh, that's my plan at least uh, that's what I hope to do now here I've got a regulator assembly that I bought online and it's amazing how many of these are available for the 1992 to 1995 Chevy central port injection and I saw on Rock Auto they call it MFI uh, multi-port fuel injection very confusing when we have three names for the same dang thing essentially it's the same thing but you know when I was doing all this work I marked everything so it would go together easier and I will transfer all of these marked bags into photographs and make it a slideshow and then also transfer those into my notes in a word document in my research files so uh, if anybody else needs my help I'll be able to pull my research up and say well this is what my notes say you know the threads were or what have you or this is how I solved the problem but I'm not an automotive technician and I'm not a uh, I'm not a marine technician, I'm just a person that likes to do their own work. But it was suggested on the Astrovan groups that for break-in oil, I go with this uh, Castrol GTX conventional motor oil. At least that's what I ordered. It doesn't say it on here, but they said stay away from the synthetic oil uh, until you get it broke in like 500 miles or so. And I ordered these online from Walmart and they delivered them today I've got an older one here somewhere Let's see what this one says this one says 10w30 motor oil doesn't really say synthetic or conventional on the front label so I don't know online Online it said differently when I ordered it. So uh, when you order stuff, you got it. This is one of the reasons I like to order online is uh, I'm able to get down into the nitty gritty as to what the specs are. 
So uh, tomorrow we will use try to use this tool to make sure I have the harmonic balancer installed well and we will uh, install the oil filter where did the oil filter go? Okay. I always have I try to stage everything so that when I reach for it I can lay my hot little fingers on it I might have put it in the van uh, I don't remember my short-term memory is failing me sometimes and I gotta look around long-term memory I'm fine but anyway uh, I hope I'm not getting uh, any cognitive de decline because I had a lot of that in my family over the years and other problems so trying to keep my mind active and busy but as far as aligning things up I found this tool pretty handy this uh, pry bar set uh, that helps me when I'm trying to line up bolts or whatever and when I'm doing any troubleshooting electric I know there's fancier tools but I like the old-fashioned uh, old-fashioned tools because it gives me instant gratification and uh, it's simpler than trying to change the scales on the meter or what have you although I know how to use a voltmeter uh, yeah, here's another one of my regulators I ordered I think Dorman 901-027 yeah I, I basically killed myself to research and learn the CPI system uh, used from 1992 to 1995 on GM 4.3 liter V6 engines and it in, to my view it's a good system if you understand how to work on it and it has a lot of failures but usually the failures are because people run the fuel tank less than a half a tank and the motor overheats and starts to the motors in the fuel tank so anyway that's all we're gonna do today that's all folks for today and uh, I've got some work to do on plumbing that I have to do or want to do. Anyway, thanks for watching.